Hello everyone. So the next project that we are working on is taking down this garage and building a 26 by 26 two-story garage with space above it. So the first step is taking down this garage. We got to demo it. Unfortunately, the town requires us to get a wrecking permit. Apparently, a group of guys and some pizza isn't good enough anymore. So uh, we got a demo crew coming tomorrow and they're going to take that down. For those to dry they came back uh, we did the stem walls those have dried now we've gotten these uh, three pads um, so this is going to be where a post goes supports the main beam that's going across the whole floor and uh, we've insulated the inside so this is R10 2 inch insulation um, this is required either on the exterior or the interior of the stem wall and then I'm going above and beyond underneath the slab. I'm going to do another two inch insulation uh, horizontally. And so that'll just allow um, some more efficiency for the garage. The other thing we completed was we have the water line ran. This is coming from inside the house. I pressure tested this to 50 psi, no leaks, so we're good there. Uh, the sewer line connects to the main line underneath us. Um, this one is going to be a clean out, so I have the clean out outside. So this just uh, Y's or T's into that, and then that'll be the clean out. I'll probably have another clean out here um, for testing and clean out purposes, but yeah, I wanted the clean out outside. Um, so now we're ready to backfill. I'll turn you around and show you the electrical. So once this is backfilled, there's going to be a 2x4 wall here, and so this will be for the main panel. Or the sub panel coming from the uh, house and then out here we have to have a service disconnect because of code so if a firefighter comes and they need to shut power off there's an outside disconnect um, so this is coming from the house right one of these pipes is coming from the house and then this pipe goes underneath and up um, so tried to make it as clean as possible and then this uh, three-quarter inch is for a data line so I wanted to show you that before we backfill and you'll
of all, this main beam here, um, budget didn't allow a bigger beam, and so we have to put the post in. And what we wanted to show you was that sauna tube that you saw during the uh, foundation pour came up, and then this is sitting center of the sauna tube, and then we're going to pour the slab over this. And then it's the same thing for those. So yeah, this 2x4 goes to a sauna tube that goes all the way down to the foundation. This is pressure treated, and then this 6x6 is also pressure treated. So we'll wrap this a few times with either this or another material, and that way the concrete's not touching the wood. Last thing I wanted to point out down here um, is this wall here. And so this is a stairwell, or it's going to be a stairwell, that goes up to the second floor. And this called out to be balloon framed. Um, so balloon framing back in the 1900s, they would put two by sixes that went all the way up from the first floor, second floor, to the roof. And that was great uh, for construction and framing. It made things a little bit easier. But it turned out it was really bad for fire uh, because um, if a fire got in this wall, it would go straight up the wall and all the way to the roof um, without a fire break. And so the code requires now that you have uh, fire breaks in between the floors. Um, and so you can see they put blocking in to block the fire, but this is a balloon framed uh, all the way up into the second floor. And I'm going to take you on the second floor to show you why. Because it's not connected in the same manner as the other sections, because there's a stairwell here, this would create a hinge point. And so here's the bottom floor, here's the top floor, it could buckle like that. Um, and so that's why they called for balloon framing uh, just in the stairwell section. concrete I wanted to show you what's underneath the concrete so we have compacted soil then we have gravel roughly two to four inches depending on the grade or the slope and on top of that we have this two inch XPS insulation it's an R10 you saw me put it on the stem walls so it's vertically and then it's also horizontally so this will be under the slab now on top of the two inch insulation we need to put a vapor barrier so a lot of states require 6 mil. If you can find 10 mil like I did, that's perfect. You want to overlap the seams at least 6. Um, if you can, 12 inches. Tape the seams. Tape around all the uh, protrusions. And we're going to be ready to pour concrete. Um, so yeah, I wanted to show you that before we pour.
can see behind me the building shell is done. I uh, wasn't able to get the Tyvek um, or the siding uh, all on video, so sorry about that, but we're ready to paint. We still got some work to do, but we're just about completed. So the garage down here, still got to add some fixtures. We got the mini splits in. We got one garage door opener in. It's the wall mounted Genie, so the other one will go right here. Um, we have a low clearance. For our ceiling so we went with the wall mount make sure we have the space over here we got the tankless hot water heater so I'm getting ready to do that <clears throat> there's our fire access door for our clean out and water shut off got some security cameras in so I gotta finish the stairwell but we got some lighting in. Got the mini split running, testing out the heating. It's a little chilly today, I think it's about 45, 50 degrees. So yeah, you can see the space um, came out really well. Can't see Pikes Peak. It's uh, kind of gloomy out there today. Hoping to do some kind of bookshelf built in here. And we'll utilize the storage space in there. Same on this side. We'll have a little desk there. Coat closet, storage closet, and our half bathroom. So there you go, the inside. It's coming out good. <laughs> 